the incredible blessing last week of inviting the wonderful Beth Stiles into our musical community to share some of her musical journey with us. And I introduced a new melody last week for Shabbat written by Beth that we'd like to do again tonight. Wherever you are, whoever you are with, I invite you to take a slow, deep breath in and breathe out your week. Again, a deep breath in and out. A few moments ago, we were talking about silver linings during this strange time that we are living through and for me the silver linings have been celebrating Shabbat with my family each week, leading services with my husband and my son, my husband and my son. In case you couldn't tell. <laughs>
breathed in an extra soul for Shabbat with the lighting of our candles. We have welcomed in our angels and the Sabbath bride who stir us awake and journey with us through this sacred time of Shabbat. We call out to one another, soul to soul, are you ready? Are you awake? Can you feel the burdens of the week fade? And are you ready to bring your whole self, body, mind, and spirit? <coughs> time to open up to the heart healing, soul filling gift of Shabbat.
Atah Adonai Ka'al Yisrael. As we prepare to move into our Amidah, our main blessing portion of the service, first I want to apologize to all the members of my community. I realized about um, two and a half minutes ago that I'm, uh, I have uh, placed this on, on our uh, Facebook page on the wrong Facebook page, so this is my personal Facebook page. I apologize for that. Uh, next week, watch, watch for the Congregation B'nai Tzedek Facebook page. And anyone who's here just as a friend of mine who wants to watch us on the Congregation B'nai Tzedek Facebook page, check us out there every Friday at 6.45. But as we prepare for going into the Amidah, the central prayer of our service, which we'll do mostly silently, the first blessing is known as Avot Mahot, the blessing over our ancestors, the Avot pointing to the male ancestors, and Imaho pointing to our female ancestors, our great ancestral mothers. And as we move into Mother's Day weekend, we want to ask God's blessing on all of the mothers in our lives. 
If you have a mother in your life that you'd like to give a little shout out in the comments, we encourage that. We also want to ask God's blessing specifically on all the expectant mothers and mothers-to-be. May God keep them calm and safe. May God bless mothers of newborns and toddlers as they deal with bottles and sippy cups and diapers and waking up at all hours. Give them strength. May God bless the mothers of young children and may they have an extra measure of wisdom to answer a flurry of questions. May God bless the mothers of teenagers. May they know when to fight the fight and when to let it go. May God bless the mothers of adult children of all ages, no matter how old our children are, they are always our children. So as we, as we bless our mothers as they grow from caretaker to companion and friend, may God bless the single mothers with strength to do as one what many do as two. May God bless mothers raising kids with another parent. May they be partners and not rivals in the raising of their children. May God bless our grandmothers and great-grandmothers. May they spoil their grandchildren with abandon. May God bless the mothers that would have been, those who struggle with fertility and those who've lost a child. May we be compassionate towards them. May all of our mothers receive our thanks and our blessing as we say together. Take a moment for our own silent prayers. prepare for our prayer of healing tonight. We think of those who are alone in their homes, who are in need of companionship, who are in need of soul lifting tonight. We think of all the nurses and doctors and people on the front lines and the caretakers who are out there making a difference and helping to heal the sick and make life better for all of us. We think of our loved ones, friends, family, people in our community who are in need of wholeness this Shabbat, both mind and body. 
source and of spirit. We invite you at this time to share any names of loved ones who you are praying for tonight, this Shabbat. Abraham Joshua Heschel's book, The Sabbath, he writes about holiness in time, meaning the differentiation between most of the week when we're focused on things and Shabbat when we're focused on time. Most of our life is dependent upon structure. We do things at a certain time, whether it's going to the gym, the office, or the classroom. We schedule meetings, run projects on a timeline, we even make our entertainment dependent on time, especially if we want to watch a particular show as it airs. There's even a certain amount of cachet if we're the first to do or see a certain thing. How we celebrate Shabbat is often phrased in what we do not do. The Torah tells us to do no work. In fact, this week's Torah portion, Amor, those are the only words used to describe our Shabbat rest. You must not do any of your labors. The word for labor, malacha, gets no expansion, no explanation. So the rabbis of the Talmud created a list of malachot, labors that are not to be done on Shabbat. 39 labors, to be precise. All based on the work the Israelites did to build Mishkan, the tabernacle in the, de in the desert. So perhaps we know what we are not supposed to do, but what are we supposed to do? Sitting and reading all day might sound like a wonderful way to, to spend Shabbat for some of us, but one size does not fit all. Shabbat is our opportunity to let go of our things and just hold on to time. Unscheduled, perhaps, we might go on a casual walk around the neighborhood, play games with our family, or slowly share a meal with people we care about. In the book Gates of Shabbat, a book I've had for so long that it actually says UAHC on the cover, it describes three different people and how they might celebrate Shabbat. They're described as the nature lover, the museum goer, and the artist. The nature lover will go outside, spend time hiking or walking around in their neighborhood, among the trees, if they have a woods nearby, by a lake, by the ocean, just taking in God's splendor and natural world. The nature, go, the nature lover does things that are halakhically acceptable for Shabbat. Going on a walk is a wonderful way to spend our time. They don't do anything that is restricted by the rabbis. 
it's not necessarily going to synagogue like like a lot of us do on Shabbat, but it still helps celebrate the day. The next is the museum goer. The museum goer could be called the theater lover or the you know the show enjoyer or whatever. But this is a person who might drive somewhere, who might go to take in a museum where there may or may not be some sort of admission to, uh, to go in. They might, they might be willing to spend money and go have, go have lunch with a friend, they, which is, which is restrict, go, uh, spending money is restricted on Shabbat. Driving might be restricted on Shabbat if that's what you follow. But, but these people do this in order to enjoy a little culture, take in, take in a movie, take in a show, enjoy some art. That, that person, the museum goer, is also making time on Shabbat to do something they might not be able to do throughout the rest of the week, and that's just enjoy some of the great culture that our world has to provide. The third is the artist, and this is the tricky one. Because in Genesis, when God was uh, creating the first Shabbat, so to speak, it was a break from creation. So in order for an artist to be someone who is celebrating Shabbat by creating is a little bit odd. And in Gates of Shabbat, it is suggested that this person should only do so if creating art is not what they do for a living. If, if putting your hands in wet clay or watching a brush spread across the canvas is something that really makes you relax, then that's the kind of artist that we're talking about. The, someone who only once a week creates art, on, only in order to sanctify Shabbat. And as a side note, this is probably someone who should not ever get any money for their artwork because then it becomes their job on Shabbat. So whether you are a nature lover, a museum goer, an artist, or some combination thereof, however we choose to celebrate Shabbat, may we all take this weekend, take these moments to sanctify our time, to make it special for us and our loved ones. Can you be Ratzon? Speaking of sanctifying our time, this is, we are in the period known as the Omer, the time when we're counting up from Pesach to Shavuot, and tonight uh, we are, we are it, just like every night in between these Two very special days. We are counting the Omer, and we and we start by saying we're ready. Behold, I am prepared and ready to perform the mitzvah of counting the Omer. As it is written in your Torah, you are to count from the end of the rest day, from the day you brought the waved Omer offering. They, the counting, shall be seven complete weeks. Until the end of the seventh week, you shall count fifty days. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher kidshanu mitzotah v'tzibanu al sfirat Omer. Praised are you, Adonai, our God, who makes us holy with mitzvot, commanding us to count the Omer. Hayom shloshim yom, shehem arba ashvuot ushne yamim la omer. Today is the thirtieth day, making four weeks and two days of the omer. May your counting be blessed. It's up to us to call ourselves to task, to sing what's good and true, to bring about redemption. It's what we were free to do. For what's the point of being here if we're not proof to change our ways? Amenulesh Shabbat, it's time to live our praise. Carrying the stories of the ones who came before. 
What stories will be told of us when we are here no more? We commit ourselves to action. It brings meaning to our days. A new less we have to praise we also are thankful for the people who lived their lives with us and gave us their love and made it a joy to be around them who are no longer with us we take a moment to think of those who are no longer in our lives uh, whether they died recently like our friend Eve Gumpel for whom we are saying uh, so for whom we are observing Shiva right now uh, also, uh, my father, Vic Young's yard site was this week, We're remembering him. And if you are remembering someone, we invite you to type their name in the chat, say their name among your family. Um, we, I know that our congregational lists are being posted in the chat as well. We take a moment to remember them. Kadisha Tom is a blessing that praises God for the people who used to be in our lives. It does not speak of mourning. It speaks only of praise, as if to say we are thankful for the joy they gave us. Together. Yikadal v'yikadal shemei rava ve'alma divra chirute v'yamlich machute V'chayichon uv'yomechon uv'chayi d'chol Beit Yisrael v'agala uv'izman kariv imru. Amen. Yehishmei Rabban v'barach v'yalam 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 Damiran Belma Vimru Yehesh Lama Rabba Mishmaya, the Chaim Alenu Bel Kol Israel, Vimru O Se Shalom Bimrama, Huya Se Shalom Alenu, Bel Kol Israel, Bel Kol Yoshe Tevel, Vimru. May the one who creates harmony on high bring peace to us, to all Israel, and to all the world, to which we say.
on me. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Have a beautiful oh. Shabbos.